Last night, Brian Sullivan told us why the so-called rare earth minerals are an important player in the trade war with China. Put simply, China is a major producer, the U.S. is a major consumer. Tonight, he's in a newly reopened mine in California with more on what's being done to breathe life into a nearly dormant industry in the U.S. and why these minerals might be the key to the future. So much of the latest and greatest high technology gear, anything from tablets to Teslas to MRI machines and even missile detection and defense systems, require a very old school way of doing business. And that is mining. We are out here at the MP Materials Mountain Pass Rare Earth Minerals Mine. You've probably heard about rare earths even here on this show. But what exactly are there and why do we care? Well, take this rock. Okay, inside this rock is a rare earth mineral called neodymium and it powers everything from that Tesla motor to very important magnets that keep everything running. Now, we used to have a very vibrant industry in the United States, but that mine went bankrupt a number of years ago after the Chinese flooded the market and prices collapsed. Well, now a new brand of entrepreneur is hoping to revive that mine, to resuscitate the rare earth minerals business in the United States so that we are not completely reliant on China. We're contrarian investors and it's not very often in life that you can buy a world-class asset at a substantial discount to replacement cost that also happens to be levered to one of the single greatest economic themes over the next 20 years. Rare earths have also played a part in the trade war because the president has issued an executive order stating that these rocks and these minerals are so critical to high tech that they are of national and economic security importance and relying on China ultimately could be a dangerous long term play. But getting it out of the ground is just one part of the story. After you crush the rock, they still send it to China to be refined. But they are hoping to fix that with a refinery that is here on site. They hope to open that up next year. Still, there's a long way to go to rebuild the industry. And one analyst we talked to said, even if we just hit the ground running full steam now, it could be a long time before the supply chains are finished. For us to actually have a fully vert vertically integrated supply chain, you're looking at a five to seven year endeavor at the, at the earliest. I mean, there's just a lot of issues surrounding permitting and environmental issues and so on and so forth. However long it may take, there is new attention both in the private markets and with the federal government around this industry because relying on China for all of our high-tech gear is viewed by many as a dangerous long-term proposition. The bottom line is this, for all the new gear that we want, it will often require a very old school way of getting key components, but an industry that many suggest may be ready to explode. Fortnightly Business Report, Brian Sullivan, Mountain Pass, California.